Um, another thing that people are really concerned about, uh, believe it or not, is legal costs of things. Those costs are going through the roof, too. We are in such a litigious society. Heck, somebody will sue me because my toenails are red if I don't be careful. Am I right? Charlie, you're laughing. Charlie Moore is here with us, CEO of Rocket Lawyer. It's true. We've gotten to a point where it's so easy, isn't it? And there's lawsuits everywhere. And I have to worry about legal expenses, especially as a small business. You do. Um, and we, we just recently did a survey. I, I'm at uh, rocketlawyer.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, we recently did a survey with Zogby in which uh, more than half of the small business owners we surveyed said legal was their number one scary thing uh, for their business. And so that's something that um, small businesses have to take seriously is protecting their business, especially when they're just starting up. You know, A lot of small businesses make the mistake of not even incorporating uh, themselves. And so they're operating, you know, lots of folks who have uh, been laid off or who are out on their own for whatever reason and trying to get started. Um, one of the things that they don't do is incorporate their businesses. And as a result, they end up having some of that personal liability. And I don't know about because their uh, toes are red, but, you know, the personal liability that goes with running a business but is But the thing, you know, important. you make up a great point with this incorporation thing, especially now it's on the forefront because of the whole tax rate, because the tax rates are going up. So I've, you know, I'm a little partnership. I file on my own personal tax return right now. Right now, it's more beneficial for me tax-wise. If the tax rates go up, it's actually more beneficial for me, at least from a tax perspective, to incorporate myself because the corporate tax rates could end up to be cheaper. I think a lot of people think, though, that incorporating is an expensive process. Is that true? Yeah, and incorporating can be uh, relatively expensive, um, but it d also depends on what your benefit's going to be. I want to get back to the tax question for just one second sure. and just say, look, um, the first thing that uh, you want to do is understand. And so you can go online, you can go to uh, uh, lots of sites online that can help you to understand some of the different ways that you can organize yourself for tax reasons. But I will, I, the first thing I'd say is get a good advisor sure. for, t for tax matters. Now, incorporating is um, a benefit that we have in all 50 states in the United States. And what it helps you to do is organize your business affairs in a way that you can properly bucket and categorize the things that are the business, the business expenses. Um, you can categorize properly as business expenses, put the business liabilities where they ought to go, and then absolutely, if you do that right, you ought to be reducing your risk of taxes right. as well as the other things that come up in business, like getting sued, sued by somebody. So it doesn't have to be expensive to incorporate your business. If you start out, educate yourself for free. You can do that at sites like ours and other sites. And then there are a lot of these things that you can actually do yourself. So let's talk about Rocket Lawyer. You started sure. this. Why? Uh, well, Tracy, I started Rocket Lawyer because um, what, what I saw about three years ago when we, when we started up was um, s pretty decent information in, in the form of books. So you could go out and you could buy a book um, and, you know, a book sort of this thick and try to educate yourself about the law if you didn't have a lot of money to spend. Or you could hire a lawyer, and um, we, that's always been available. But lawyers are expensive, too. Very. Yeah. Well, w with the Internet, um, I thought we could give people a, an easy place to go where they could learn about the law themselves in a, in a more um, informal way. So they could go answer a few simple questions about themselves and their situation. Everything is interview-driven. Like if you just use a tax prep program, sure. the H&R Block, Intuit, you know, TurboTax, that's sort of an experience to go and do common legal tasks I thought would be great. And it has resonated with people. More than 10 million people are going to use Rocket Lawyer this year. Well, because we're, I mean, we've, we've seen this resurgence of the entrepreneur and the entrepreneurial spirit, especially, and it happens when you're in a recession, right? Everyone gets, tries to get off their butt and do something on their own. And you know, I know you talk to small businesses all the time. What, yeah. What's the sense that's coming out of them? I mean, I reported that the survey's up and that the sentiment is up uh, a tad, but that doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot to me. Like, uh, to me, the, the small business owners I talk to, they're still really down and out about everything. Well, uh, I think there's good news uh, also, though. Small business owners are, are definitely uh, uh, concerned. And so when we survey them, they definitely say that they're concerned about high legal costs. They're also concerned about the, uh, the overall economy. It's never easy to start a business. Right. Um, but, you know, some of the best companies uh, ever companies like Microsoft oh, yes. were Airlines. absolutely were started in response to 
a recession. Our business, I mentioned, we started three years ago. We've grown quite a lot. What we're providing folks is an affordable alternative to some more expensive processes. So what are the legal fees that they're most afraid of? Are they afraid of getting sued? Or are they afraid right. of, they are? Absolutely. Okay. So businesses are afraid of getting sued. They're also afraid of um, compliance. And so oh. um, I, I really try to talk to small businesses about the three big things that they can do. The first is to understand the law, understand it, go and educate themselves. The second is to organize and operate their business in a way that reduces their risk. So put contracts in writing, keep good records. The third is compliance. We all have to comply with federal, state, and local rules. But to rules. me, that's the hardest part of the, those three pieces that you just offered because I, I don't think the government understands its own compliance rules and regulations these days, and they're changing them by the minute. Well, there, it's always a dynamic environment, and so um, the, uh, the, the government rules change when you reduce taxes, the government rules right. change when you raise taxes. So when you do uh, any sort of uh, governing, day to day, the rules change. One of the things that we try to get people to do is think about their legal needs more like a vitamin than an aspirin. And so by doing that, you can do the everyday things that are going to help you to stay in compliance. For example, a lot of businesses don't know that in Cal the state of California, every two years they're supposed to do HR training in the business. Mm -hmm. Now they may not know that and they may fall out of compliance by educating themselves and then having a program. We have a set of tools on our site that we, get, that we encourage a business to use to basically have a legal calendar to help them to stay in compliance, mm -hmm. compliance and then have a good, a good financial and a good legal advisor a good lawyer. Because that's, that's the story of the day, right? It all started back with Sarbanes-Oxley all these sure, rules yeah. that are put in place that are really, they're, they're just damning to the small business guy because he's, he's almost at a point where he's got to hire another person just to keep in compliance. And this is going to continue to happen, right? The Financial Reform Act is coming, uh, is starting uh, to kick in. All this stuff just puts the burden on the small business guy because he doesn't have the staff to do it himself. Yeah, it is, it is a challenge to comply with all, all of the laws, rules, and procedures. Now, those rules and procedures are there for a reason. Um, they're, they're, uh, That's fodder <laughs> for another show. Fair enough. Let's have that debate. <laughs> That's great. Um, but the, the rules are there for, for a reason. Um, one of the things, though, that and, and whatever your competitive environment, you know, I'm an entrepreneur myself. When you go out and you start a business, you know that you're in, in a capitalist society. You're going to go out and you're going to compete. Sure. All right? And so one of the ways that uh, so a small business owner can put their head in the sand and they can complain about the way things are or they can go out and get the tools to compete the way things are. Fair enough. And, and so I, I'd like to talk to them about, you know, we understand that we are in a litigious society. We're in a society where there are new rules coming up ev every, uh, not, not necessarily every day, but every month. Seems it. <laughs> right, exactly. There's new stuff happening. And um, if you're a landlord, for example, you have to comply with the rules when Sadly, you have to ev evict right. people. That's going on a lot today. But it's interest me, it interested me that one in four small businesses are worried about legal fees. I would have thought, I mean, i got to believe yes. health care costs are on, up there, too. You're sure. worried about health care. Sure. You're worried about un, you know, changing tax rates. I mean, they, they, they kind of all got to be right. Sure, right? sure. And they, they add up. And so if you're going to compete in, in this environment, you, you really ought to make sure that you understand the environment of the competition have the weapons and the yeah, tools exactly. behind you because I think one thing that we all share and have in common is for for America to do better small business has to succeed Amen. and um, not just small business but new businesses the real you know there's a lot of uh, there's some interesting studies uh, lately about how important not just small businesses are but look you don't want the business to stay small forever sure. it's the new businesses you mentioned Southwest Airlines it's those businesses that organize those entrepreneurs out there who may be listening that organize themselves to go out and compete based on the environment at hand to offer affordable solutions when people need affordable solutions and to make their legal the legal part of their business a competitive advantage and so we try to help them to think about doing that so that's why you started rocket lawyer three years ago it's rocketlawyer.com correct that's right charlie moore thank you so much for being here my pleasure